today we have this Sony uh, Vidicon type camera, very old monochrome camera from the 70s. Um, don't actually have the original lens on it, but we have an old uh, Vidicon type camera tube in there. And we have this electronic viewfinder with a little, I think around 4 inch CRT on it. Uh, an old Billing Lee type PL259 video connector is how old it is. They haven't been used probably since the 70s and some of the early VCRs which were probably in the 1970s. Um, now the problem with this, this was just bought at a junk store basically and the actual viewfinder isn't operating. Um, I haven't actually tried the camera either but um, when I switch this on we get a green light uh, just there. Uh, no image there at all, no raster, nothing, so I assume something's wrong in the TV section. So I guess the first thing we should probably do is hook this up to a television and and just check if the video output's working. And um, then we'll have a look at this uh, viewfinder. Now the camera model is AVC3250CE. That's an Australian version, 220V, 50Hz. Um, I'm not sure if this viewfinder is the same model number or not, but I'll have these screws. Uh, the viewfinder is actually an AVF3250 ACE and it runs on AC 13 volt 14 watt. So it looks like this DB9 connector is the only connection to it. So the question is whether the this other unit is, which has the 240 volts going into it, uh, whether that's supplying voltage to this or not. So I might as well see if this is actually doing anything first. And um, then if, if this part's working, we'll have a look at the viewfinder and see if anything's faulty in that. So I've got my TV set up here with an AV input. Um, I don't actually have one of these PL259 plugs anymore. They used to make adapters for these to, to BNC or RCA for in the old video dubbing kits you used to be able to get back in the 80s, but I haven't even got one of those anymore because generally the other on a few CB radio antennas, they really don't use these sockets for anything and I haven't used one in a long, long time. I haven't used any gear with it. So all I've done is got an RCA plug and just bent the earth out a little bit because the pin will fit down the middle. And we can touch on there. And we have something happening here. Yes, yeah, so I'd say the tube is, was running. I'll get my connector back in. Okay, now I do have an old, old closed circuit TV camera lens here that looks like to have the, I think it's a C mount, same thread on it. This one is some sort of zoom lens that came out of a bank. I don't have the controller for the for all the lenses here, but so I've taken the cover off so I can manually adjust them. Now, this was on a much later Sony camera, CCD one, but it may work on this one. I'll we'll find out. Reconnect our plug. Oh, there we go. That's actually not too bad. That's the zoom. Or is that the zoom? Okay, that's our focus. That's our zoom. And I think the other one is for brightness here. Yeah. Exposure. That's my soldering iron leads. So it looks like this tube is, is working. There's possibly a little bit of burn on the image there, but that's to be expected from something this old. What that was. Might just be my dodgy connection here. But yeah, it looks like this camera part's working. So I assume there's probably going to be some AC voltage coming out of here. There's probably just a power transformer or something. So I doubt there's any regulators or anything to die if it's AC. So we'll disconnect that for now. And I'll take the covers off the actual camera unit if I can work out how to get them off. Some sort of cover here. Now 
Oh, that's already coming off. Okay, and that should allow us to take the sides off. Okay, so this is the inside of it. Looks to be a small signal board here with our brightness and contrast. And here's our deflection line output transformer. Um, I'd say our horizontal output transistors in there somewhere. Possibly there's a TO5 old metal case transistor with a heatsink on it there, so that's probably to do with that. Obviously our yoke, yeah, bipolar cap, I think that isolates the yoke and the, that's probably a horizontal width or something, width or linearity coil. Okay, I can see a large electrolytic capacitor down here, so that's probably where, where our voltage comes in. Yeah, it looks like the DB9 goes onto that board on that side. Yeah, we've got a 3300 mic capacitor. There's some sort of transistor down in here, TO220 case which that could be our voltage, a voltage regulator uh, yeah, next to the capacitor I can see some diodes so that's probably yeah, is a, most likely a bridge rectifier in there so there's our cap bridge rectifier and that goes back to this connector which I assume goes back to our DB9 so that'll be the first place to, to check um, put this back on the camera and see if we've got any voltage on that capacitor. Uh, okay. okay I'm not here. Uh, tangled up and everything. Uh, the power on there. Put power back on. Obviously, be careful with this now that it's live again. Even though there shouldn't be any high voltage besides there but we don't know what voltage this is actually going to run on. Check across this large capacitor filter cap and yeah, we've got around 23 volts there so we've got AC coming out of this which will most likely just come straight out of a transformer anyway so it's unlikely to fail and we've got around 23 volts once that AC has been rectified and filtered. Uh, so it's a matter of seeing if this there is a TO220 transistor screwed onto this bottom plate. And yeah, it's got a, a wire tab on the, the metal tab on top of the transistor. There's a little lug. So that's likely to be our, let's just see if we've got, so we've got 23 odd volts, should have, there, and 23 to chassis, so chassis is earth, so I'll use that for my multimeter earth point, and is that connected, that won't be, that's insulated, so, yeah, so we've got, 23 odd volts on the collector of that transistor so that's likely to be our voltage regulator we've then got a purple and a brown wire which must be base and emitter and it looks like they come back to this connector first two pins here on this connector which the AC the DB9 seems to also connect to so yeah we've got 22 volts there and nothing there so I would assume that that our base is getting its bias which has now gone up to 22 volts because something's open in this transistor by the look of it the emitter's got no voltage so 
and turn that off. Now the collector is connected, should be connected to that, to the positive of the filter cap, which it is. So that's our collector point. Our filter cap's probably still charged up. Looks like there was something there. Yep, so that's still charged up, so we need to discharge that. I mean, probably doesn't matter too much, but we don't want stray readings. I've got a resistor here somewhere. I just use like a 5 watt, 100, 120 ohm as this one is, odd resistor, somewhere around there. And you just put that across the terminals where you can safely hold it by the ceramic case. And discharge our capacitor, which now has virtually zero on it. So if we go to diode test, uh, so what sort of transistor is it? Okay, so a C1061, which is 2SC1061, so that's an NPN. All the 2SCs, are, 2SCs and 2SDs are NPNs. So I'm guessing that's the base. And we've got no measurement to what is probably the emitter, no measurement to collector. Maybe try on the other way around. That's probably just a capacitor or something, but it's not sitting at 0.6 volts. That's actually sitting at 0.6 volts. But that's like collector to base, but the wrong way around. If that was a PMP transistor, we'd have a positive. Anyway, we'll see. I'll find out what the pin out of this transistor is in case I've got it wrong. Uh, somewhere I've got an old data book. This is how we did it in the old days, up-to-date world transistors, diodes, etc. Look. And simply look up your transistor number, 2SC, what did I say it was? 1061. SC 1061 silicon NPN 50 volt 3 amp 25 watt 8 megahertz so yeah that's certainly a typical sort of a lower power voltage regulator 3 amps 50 volts perfect for this situation now the figure is 17J so that's a 17 case which will be a 220 obviously that will give us a pin out and J will give us a list of what each pin is so it should be right at the back here somewhere in this book Oops, here we go. Figure 17, yeah, TO220. So we've got pin 1, 2, 3, and 4 if you count, but that's usually just a collector on the case. And J, so it's BCE across 1, 2, 3. So the front of the transistor is BCE, which I'm pretty sure is how I look, was looking at it. Yeah, purple goes to that side. So it looks like that, vo that voltage regulator transistor is probably faulty in this thing. Um, there's no voltage coming out of it. And the junctions aren't measuring correctly. And one thing I will check is if that's our emitter, and that's ground, yeah, we have a fairly low resistance across that, so there may be a short circuit in this somewhere, which is possibly lead to the transistor overheating and dying. Uh, most likely if anything shorted out it'll be in this horizontal output section. Looks like we've got a connector on that board so make sure your power's off. Uh, it's actually got flathead screws in here which is a bit odd for a Japanese piece of equipment but it is quite an old one so maybe that's what they used back in the 70s. Rather odd little flatheads with a round hole in them. Not your usual Sony thing, which is normally all Phillips head. Uh, just be careful that you don't pull on anything and damage the picture tube, break the end off the tube. So there's our connector to this board. The only other connections go to the picture tube, yoke, and EHT lead. So now I've got that disconnected. I can probably take this off the camera now anyway, but We'll go from our emitter to ground again. Yeah, so now we're getting a much better reading.
yeah, 600 ohms or something, so that's fair enough for a power rail. With the connector back in on the horizontal stage, we're reading 30 ohms. So it's not a dead short, which is interesting. More like 32 ohms, so I'm not sure what that would be. But I'll move that from the camera and get that out of the way for now. And have a bit of a look around. So that yeah, looks to be a horizontal output transistor. It's the only big transistor on that board. There's our yoke connector here that goes through this inductor. Maybe width or linearity or something that's adjustable. Bipolar capacitor there, which a lot of these little black and white TVs used. Just as I think it's just a DC isolator to the yoke. Looks like the other side of the yoke here goes to ground. That big pad here, well, it's got the screws on it, so that'll be ground. And then our line output. And somewhere there will be a voltage coming into that line output from our, our B plus rail here. Let's disconnect that for a minute. Go back to continuity. So there's quite a low resistance across our horizontal output. But again, yeah, now it's 34 odd ohms. Um, so that's our yoke. Same sort of thing. There's ground. That's ground. So that's our yoke to ground. So we'll just... Um, Pull the pin on the yoke because the yoke is connected to ground. So across our bipolar capacitor there, now the, sh the low resistance is gone, so there's no path to earth there. So it's still on this horizontal output stage somewhere. Um, there are often ancillary diodes and stuff that run other rails. Uh, maybe run the picture tube heater, a couple of diodes that rectify other pins off this line output. Um, to run other, like probably 100 odd volt, well, maybe not so high in this one, but most colour TVs have 100. Okay, just had to empty my memory card a bit. So, yeah, 100 odd volt rail, um, probably 30 odd volts in a colour TV to run your vertical output chip and stuff. But anyway, this this is black and white and it's not going to have a lot of those things. There's not that many windings on this. Looks like a couple of earths. Um, the horizontal output and the yoke, so that would be the output of the transformer, so somewhere connected to that should be our 30 volt rail. So that's got a connection. Uh, goes through a 10k resistor, so that won't be anything of interest. Now that one is connected, there's a bit of flux and stuff here, so that one's not, oh, is it connected or is it not? Well, we're gonna get measurements to everything probably. Let's now go back to ohms. So that's 0.6 ohms, so that's that's 40 ohms. So that's so that connection and that connection are definitely joined. In an actual winding, that's 0.1 ohms, so that one too. Yeah, 34 to ground and nothing to that one, so it's a completely separate winding. Uh, what's this winding? That's definitely connected to the horizontal output. And on the other side of the board we have a diode, but it's going the wrong way, it's like a negative, negative rail, so let's just check that's okay. Yeah, the other side of it's 34 ohms. It goes into, oh, that's, oh, it goes to ground. Yeah, that diode connects back to this ground pad and it's the opposite way round. Yeah, it's going to measure low. So I don't think that's necessarily, well if that was shorted it would have less than 34 ohms. So the only other pin was this one here, which goes to this 220 mic cap, so that may be a filter on the incoming rail. 34 ohms to ground, so that's probably not shorted. We have a couple more things, this looks like a little inductor. It goes to this pin, which goes down to our picture tube by the look of it. An inductor off the B plus. Not quite 
not sure what that's doing. Let's um, check that. That's the second pin in. Let's now, hang on. Yeah, that's the second pin in, and this inductor, which is also connected to it, is the fourth pin in, the brown and the orange wires. Let's see if I can find where they go. There's an orange wire there. Looks like they, well, they definitely go down that harness. There's no brown ones on that small connector. So there's two brown. We know that one goes to the regulator transistor. So, so yeah, most likely there's brown and orange in a pair, which is the one, two, three, fourth and fifth connection here. Try not to damage anything like that. So the fourth and fifth on this pin. Ah, well that one connects to the emitter of the transistor. This other one goes to some component there. It's a resistor, about a one watt resistor. It then goes... So it goes to a trim pot. I don't know, it's a... Is it the horizontal drive transformer? No. It's above that. Possibly this electro or something. I'm not sure quite what component that's connected to. It's a bit hard to see these. Is it the drive transformer? Got your diodes. There's a drive transformer here. And it does go to the drive transformer by the look of it. If on the orange, so that's our must be our horizontal drive coming up, although that wouldn't connect to the B plus, that's a bit odd. Orange wire. Let's see it goes in. It's definitely that wire. First, second, fourth is definitely connected to that. There's a resistor. Oh, could it be the oh yeah, maybe that's oh yeah, of course our horizontal drive. That's, oh yeah, that's that's the horizontal drive transistor, I assume, yes. So that's a rail coming down to the primary side of the horizontal drive transformer. That's just the voltage coming back down to feed the the drive transistor, I would assume. That would be the collector on the other side. So this must be the actual output of the horizontal. Half going to ground, other half comes up to another pin there, which is the one after the orange one. That's yellow wire, which is the second from the end on that connector. Yeah, it goes into the base of the horizontal output. So I think that's just, I don't know why it comes up there through an inductor and back to that transformer, but anyway. So it looks like the brown wire is our B+, plus, which was the fourth one. So this is our B+, plus coming from the regulator transistor. through an inductor, through the line output to the collector of the horizontal output transistor. So what's this other wire? As to the picture tube, I can actually see that's going into the heater coil, which is a little, this has actually got kind of whitish looking wires on it, goes right up the very center of all the circular pieces in the picture tube. So we must have a 12 volt heater or whatever this, line is meant to be because it can't be 6.3 once this is regulated I doubt it'd be 6.3 volts that is a 16 volt 220 mic capacitor so this may be a 12 volt picture tube a heater in the picture tube which is an odd one but we'll disconnect that disconnect the picture tube socket and measure across our horizontal output transistor will be good enough for now. Yeah, now we're up in the, the mega ohm range. So that brown wire here must run down to our our heater in our picture tube, and it's going to Earth. I might be able to actually check if that's 34 ohms there. Which pins? Oh, I can see the welds in there. I think it's that pin and that pin. Well, there's a short there. Well, there you have it, 33 and a half ohms. So that's our our heater. So that's the only short circuit in here by the look of it. So that it may just be a faulty faulty voltage regulator. So I'll connect the tube back up. 
Um, while I've got this board out, it's probably a good time to get a screwdriver and get onto our. Yeah, that'll do. Voltage regulator transistor. So I'm just undo the screw that holds the tab on. And so yeah, red red wire with an eyelet on it going to the collector. And it's insulated off the case. Here's our transistor. If you can see that, C1061. So now what I need to do is find a replacement for that. I can probably uh, remove a pin, one of these pins, which one was the base? That was the base. The purple wire. Unsolder that. And we'll do a diode test on this. So NPN, so yeah, there's nothing from the base to collector. I'm making, managing to make a connection there. There's nothing from the base of the emitter. So that's basically open circuit junctions, which is not not the way they usually go out, but but that seems to be the problem. So go back to our equivalence book. 1061. There are a lot of two C transistors. Thousands of them, I think. BD240, unfortunately, it mostly gives you European equivalents, which generally I avoid European transistors if I can help it. And I've got plenty of second-hand Japanese ones anyway, so 2S3-3250, that's a fairly late one, so I doubt I have one of those, but I'll see what I can find. After a bit of poking around uh, through my drawer of old transistors that I've salvaged out of old TVs and stuff over the year, years. Uh, I found this C1983 which is a pretty common transistor in old equipment. I can't remember exactly what it was used for but um, a lot of these other transistors are vertical outputs and um, RGB drivers so completely wrong sort of ratings but this is basically listed as a high beta but otherwise it's around the same ratings 3 amps but um, 80 volts I think it was. So it's a little bit higher voltage but that'll certainly do the job. Um, this one's still got the collector pin which the old one doesn't have so I've just bent that up out of the way or that could be cut off or we should get some side cutters and snip most of that off and um, that should do the job for us uh, just bend these pins straight so we'll put our base wire on first so I don't lose track of which is which uh, here's some pliers to hold it. Seems to have made a decent connection. Slide our spaghetti back up to insulate it because it's sitting on a metal chassis. Remove the other spaghetti. Oh, hang on, I've put it on the wrong transistor. That was smart, I'll put it back on the original one. Okay, try again. Uh, some solder. Just put some fresh solder on the pins of this 2SC 1983. That wire's sitting pretty good, so I'll try and connect to that. connection. Put our spaghetti back. Now remove this one again from the C1061. Really? Try not to shake the joint around as it sets. We're going to end up with a dry connection. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Spaghetti back in place. Yeah. 
Insulating washers moved. Seems to have plenty of silicon grease on that side, but I'll put new coating of heatsink compound on our new transistor. Just to make sure we get good thermal contact, because we don't want it prematurely dying again, because it didn't have enough heat transfer and got too hot. So now we've got to juggle all these bits back into place. Pull the wiring harness back in. Hopefully our paste will stick that down, but just make sure you get this. Well, I'll stick the washer to it anyway. Make sure you get your mica washer in place correctly. Because this transistor has to be insulated from the chassis because it's the collector is the tab in the back of it and that's got our 20 odd volts coming in and it won't do it any good if we short it to earth there's our screw hole and now I've got to get this little eyelet in place which makes it extra difficult okay, I'll screw on the end of our magnetic screwdriver and I oh, thank God it went in the hole. Just get the transistor centered on the mica washer. Uh, we've got our horizontal board unplugged. So the screw connects to the chassis, but our collector doesn't. So the tab on the transistor is safely isolated. So now I can put our horizontal board back in, plug it back in. Picture tube still plugged in. Uh, there's a flat blade screwdriver here somewhere. There's another one, that'll do. Screws back in. I'll have my other screw gone. There it is. Okay, let's check that screws out, especially that earth one up. So, got our connectors back in. Quick test there. Uh, I forgot which one's which. Base, I think, to emitter. Yes, now we've got 0 0.6 volts. Base to collector. 0 0.6 volt junction. And that should still measure 35 odd ohms, whatever it was. 32 ohms now, it seems to vary a bit, but anyway, it depends on where I'm earthed. But yeah, we've got no short on anything. Ohms across the input. Oh, yeah, because it's isolated. Yeah, I'm going to say there's a transformer there, but no, that's by the bridge rectifier. So I think we're safe to just a final check, make sure everything's plugged in, nothing's in the wrong place and shorting out anything. We'll bring our camera unit back, set it on, and apply the voltage by the look of it. Yeah, we've got a Green light there, but still nothing. Oh, here we come. Of course, these do take a while. Looks like oh, a fair bit of burn on that tube. There's the bitty cons just kicked in. Uh, we seem to have a vertical issue here. Uh, I don't see any vertical hold connections. Is there anything I've left disconnected? Yeah, definitely some sort of vertical hold issue. I'll see when we connect it alright. Uh, I don't remember seeing any pots for vertical hold in this. I think we 
me see. I don't think I tweaked any pots, and there's a few pots in there, but what they actually do. Oh, what is this? This has got. Ah. Uh, there's our problem. Oh, I've got to be set to internal sink. So we set to external sink. Light level, low and high. So that's what it was. We're just switching the wrong position. I've got our vertical sink back. Uh, don't know if I can get you to see, oh yeah. So there's our shelving unit again that we were looking at on the other monitor. And yeah, it seems to be working. Uh, yeah, if I block the little camera lens off, you should be able to see there's a bit of. Oh yeah, if I turn up the brightness, a bit of burning on the tube there. I'm not quite sure what that is, but someone's probably used this as a closed circuit TV because from what I've heard on the internet, these don't put out normal sync pulses, although it was enough to run run that little TV monitor there. But um, supposedly you can't actually record these cameras on a VCR or DVD recorder or something. Not that you really want to these days, but some people seem to be using them for retro work. So yeah, we've got a bit of a bit of burn on that screen. Oh yeah, now you can really see it. So yeah, it looks a bit. Not sure if that's a door frame or a window frame, something like that. Some sort of arched thing, maybe. Yeah, it's amazing the detail you can actually see. But any if this if a camera is left sitting on a bright image. The bright parts will actually burn in and leave, burn the phosphor, leaving a darker image. Um, yeah, you can actually see a bit of it. Probably not going to show up on, on the camera here, but there is a bit of a dark image. Even if it's burnt enough, it'll show up. Even just on the, the phosphor of the screen, just from external light on it. So. Yeah, at least that seems to be on the on the actual monitor screen rather than the camera tube. So there's probably a similar burn on the camera tube, but nothing as bad as that. But it looks like we've got this going again. Um, see what voltage this thing actually runs on. So if we go back to our ground. And that's our 20 odd volts. Well, yeah, with the load on it, it's now dropped to 19 volts. Uh, that was our emitter. Yeah, 12 volts. So, so this camera runs on 12 volts, even though it said 14 volts AC or whatever, that is converted up to 19 odd volts. And then regulated down to 12 volts. So, yeah, strangely, this. Well, maybe it's strange, I'm not sure. Well, I haven't worked on a lot of these little black and white tubes, but that, this picture tube has a 12 volt uh, heater coil. I mean, that might have been something they did with these little little 5 inch TVs. I'll have to have a look at one after and see whether they, because a lot of them ran off 12 volts. So it's possible they made them with a 12 volt filament instead of a 6.3, just so they could run it directly off the, the battery supply or DC supply if you run off a car or whatever. So that may be what's going on there, but yeah, certainly a bit different. And what else we've got here? Sharp and normal switch. Yeah, probably not going to make much difference unless I get the image focused. But there we have it. This is working again. It seems to be a common problem with these cameras from what I saw online to have a problem with the um, viewfinder not working. So that may be all that it is, just this little 2SC 1061 transistor mounted on the base there is just yeah, it's oddly gone open circuit in the junctions which you know a lot of transistors don't do that almost looks like it's got a bit of corrosion or something on it but yeah maybe something to do with those the flux or the plastic on there is eating up inside the case I don't know it's again very odd for these you know, say Tashi made transistor going by that symbol they're generally very reliable um, but maybe this has just done so much work, if it's been used as a closed circuit TV, it would have been on all day, every day, sort of thing. Maybe in a shop or something for opening hours, and it's just 
died. I mean, it's been going since the 70s, so it's getting pretty old now. So, you know, it's probably 35 to 40 years old, maybe more, 45 years old. Um, so, yeah, that's that's our problem. I'll just put a C1983, which but I'm, you can may well still be able to get these somewhere off eBay or one of the parts suppliers. But, you know, this is like a $15 camera. Um, I only basically bought it as a bit of a novelty thing, so I'm not going to waste any money and time waiting to order a transistor in. As long as it's going at the moment, that'll suit me. So I might take the um, cover off the camera here, put this back together, and, and we'll have a look inside the camera just out of interest. I'm not sure if we'll see a lot, but we'll see what's inside the camera unit. Okay, I've taken the covers off the camera here, so we're going to have a look inside of the camera. Um, obviously where the lens screws on, we've got our picture tube inside here, our Vidicon type, I shouldn't say picture tube, our camera tube, uh, Vidicon type tube, it's got some sort of shield over most of it, which I think there are deflection coils of some sort in there, I think these are kind of scan like a picture tube in reverse, um, you can see the little end of our glass envelope there and a socket so it looks very much like the same as the end of the picture tube in the uh, viewfinder some sort of little shielded circuit board there um, power transformer is this big thing here just you know old copper wire and iron cord transformer some of the wiring to that there's another little circuit board up here with some big electrodes that's probably some sort of voltage regulator is our DB9 connected for the viewfinder. Um, on the other side here there's a, I assume the main signal processing board which has a an edge connector on it, computer type edge connector. When I took there was a little, took the bracket off that and there's a little black plastic cover there. There's a, a fuse, little fuse board here. So I'm not sure what that causes when it blows but probably no power to the camera or something. So I'll see if I can unplug this signal board and it does come out yeah so that's connected to this other shielded board um, yeah it's actually all discrete components it's not actually an integrated circuit to be seen by the look of it there's transistors a lot of trim pots and none of which seem to be labeled other than like the board number VR14 whatever VR1 so yeah, a lot of electrolytic capacitors, transistors, so this is, you know, how they did it in the really old days. Um, yeah, I'm sure more recent ones would have a couple of, at least 14 or 16 pin chips to do some of the processing, but this is all just analog circuitry. Nothing done in, a, in an integrated circuit. I can see a bit more of the power section here. Yeah, a lot of wiring going to that connector. Our video wiring and stuff all seems to come back to here. And yeah, some sort of video, probably video up to our viewfinder. There's a transistor in there, a little, I think it's a TO126, and this sort of half size TO3 type style case, which I assume is a voltage regulator for this. And that's probably what the rest of this circuitry here is doing. Looks like there may be another fuse. Yeah, there is definitely. So there's another three three fuses under a plastic cover behind the transformer so probably mains input and maybe something from the upper of the transformer a couple of rails before they go to bridge rectifiers or the like but anyway so there's a total of four fuses in these things um, and that's the main main thing really the it looks like the wiring from the tube also goes to that connector including what is probably some sort of deflection coils up in these wires that go up and under that shielded part but yeah that's that's basically all that's in it it's not even a single integrated circuit I think there was one integrated circuit in the viewfinder probably for the sync signal or something like that vertical drive horizontal drive all that sort of thing because um, you yeah, not many people use discrete circuits to do all that but it can be done some of the early color TVs did but um, when it comes to the signal processing of this, which I would have thought is equally complex, uh, it's all just analog signals. So possibly that's why these don't have a proper sync generator inside them. Uh, that's why you can't usually record these cameras because yeah, there's not even an integrated circuit set up to to produce proper timing 
of the sync signals, but it's enough obviously for a little portable TV to lock onto. But anyway, that's that's what they're like inside. Thankfully, there's nothing wrong with this, um, other than a little bit of burning on the tube. But that would be expected. You, sh you know, if you're ever going to buy one of these sort of cameras to use it for anything, uh, best thing is to run the screen onto a, just a, a blank, single colour white sheet, preferably. Um, and just see if you can see anything, move the camera around a bit and if there's any like images that, that move around with the camera uh, that's usually burning on the tube and if it's not too bad it probably doesn't matter but sometimes you'll get like a badly burnt spot or something because someone's had it pointing at something bright um, but yeah other than that amazingly this thing still works pretty well for something from the 70s so not sure what I'll do with it but it's a Interesting to see one of these oddball old cameras again. There weren't many of these ever made, I don't think. Because um, this, this predates the home VCR, or at least, you know, lots of people owning one. Um, so, yeah, maybe uh, from the sound of it on the internet, they, these were used by schools and the like. Um, whether they actually recorded them or not, because this was back in the day of just, yeah, mono, monochrome reel to reel recorders, like big old tape reel-to-reel -reel tape machines that used to record video, some of the TV stations had them, I've seen them. Um, possibly it was getting into the era of like U-Matic VCRs and there was a Philips VCR with square tapes but I think that was a bit later, that was colour. But I think U-Matic was only monochrome but anyway yeah there wouldn't be a lot of these around but not much use these days but certainly an interesting old technical curiosity that's for sure. And um, yeah, it was quite simple to fix the, the viewfinder, which I'll put back together now. So I'll put the camera back together and probably just stick it on the shelf and look at it from now on. Uh, thanks for watching. Okay, just as another interesting observation, if um, these actually have quite a long persistence of vision, I'm not sure if it's just the viewfinder or the camera tube itself, but I suspect it's the camera tube. So I've just been facing this towards my parts shelves for a bit. If I cover this up with my hands, you can actually see there's quite, you can still see the outline of the shelves there, which will slowly fade away, but it actually has quite a long persistence of vision, which is probably why people would want to use these old cameras for the sort of those sort of special effect type things which were used in some of the early music videos and the like. Um, you also tend to get a bit of flaring effects and stuff. Not sure if we can get it to do that here, but when you go from bright to dark sometimes or we'll move the camera around they will actually flare get a weird flaring effect and stuff but anyway it does have quite a long persistence of vision which is quite interesting so as well as the burn in um, yeah they're generally very slow to react the phosphor obviously stays activated um, being a sort of, you know, a more chemical thing, I guess, than electronic. So it's more a sort of physical thing with the phosphor. Then, um, yeah, so no matter how good the electronics are, if the phosphor has persistence of vision, uh, there's not much the electronics can do about that. Yeah, I think my camera's going to adjust to suit whatever I do to that, but. Yeah, there's plenty of burn in there, which is on the vidi tube, on the CRT, the viewfinder tube. But yeah, they're certainly not old design. They take quite a while to warm up these tubes. Now that I've used it, it'll probably be a little bit quicker, but the CRT tends to warm up quicker than the than the camera tube. Yeah, and then you can see the camera tube come in slightly after. So we'll put our CRT raster first. And yeah, it looks like, is that just probably just my camera doing that? Yeah, I can't see that hum line. Looks like a bit of a hum bar going up the screen, but I think that's just the actual video, my actual modern camera causing that. But yeah, there you go. Some interesting old effects you can do with these things. Yeah, that's just the shutter, I think, in, in my Canon doing that. But anyway, that's a little bit of bonus footage for you. See you next time.